Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in this video we're going to be talking about very unusual exoplanets that don't really exist in our own solar system but seem to be pretty much everywhere else out there in our galaxy. And today we're going to discuss a new study that suggests that very very large majority of those exoplanets are actually water worlds. In other words, what the scientists behind this paper discovered is that it's very likely that the, one of the most common types of exoplanets out there is actually a water planet. Anyway, let's talk about this and welcome to What The Math. So unfortunately this is not such an exoplanet, this is more of a lava or fire world. But interestingly, this qualifies as one of those unusual exoplanets that don't exist in our own solar system. This right here is uh, what's known as a super Earth. And let me start by saying that most of these details and most of these findings are coming from the famous Kepler telescope that has recently been retired by NASA. Now Kepler telescope is famous for literally just staring at the same spot in space and for discovering close to about 4000 exoplanets, a lot of which are still being confirmed. As of 2019, it's the most prolific telescope ever in terms of discovering exoplanets and what's really interesting about it is that it was only looking at a small part of the night skies and even in that tiny tiny part it was able to discover so many exoplanets which really opened up our minds to potentially discovering a lot of Earth-like worlds out there. But interestingly that's not what we discovered. Of all of the exoplanets out there, only some of them were Earth-like. As you can see on this graph here, only the planets on this line right here qualify as somewhat Earth-like. Everything else though seems to be very different. And here's a much better image that really shows you what we've discovered in terms of the actual sizes of planets. For the most part, the vast majority of exoplanets we've discovered are just a little bit bigger than Earth in size and are just a little bit smaller than Neptune and Uranus. In other words, these are planets known as the super-Earths and also planets known as mini-Neptunes. Many Neptunes, as you can see, are the most common types of exoplanets we've discovered, but unfortunately neither one of those types exists in our own solar system, which already is a huge mystery to us. We don't really understand why, we don't know where they went, we also don't really know if we're just in a weird solar system, or if our star, the Sun, has swallowed them at some time in the past. Or possibly they do exist, like for example the legendary Planet 9 might be a um, mini Neptune or a super Earth, but um, once again we're not really sure. But that's not really what this video is about today. Today we're talking about this type of the exoplanet, as you can see the most common exoplanet out there known as a mini Neptune or sometimes also known as a sub Neptune. For the longest time the scientists, uh, most scientists at least, believe that sub Neptunes or mini Neptunes are well kind of similar to Uranus and Neptune. They're basically these really large worlds that are bigger than Earth, way smaller than Jupiter and Saturn, but are still sort of gas-like. They still have a very, very large gas atmosphere, or atmosphere-like sort of layer, and for the most part they may not really contain anything hard on the inside. They're essentially like small gas giants. But some scientists have been speculating that maybe this is not true. Maybe sub neptunes or mini neptunes are not really gas planets at all. Maybe they're something else. And so this study right here, that you can find in the description below, talks just about that. They used a lot of simulations, they used a lot of analysis to try to figure out, so what is this most common planet like? Are they essentially something like this? This is comparable to planet Earth. And in terms of mass, um, very, very similar to planet Earth, but in terms of radius, much larger, because the density here is very low. And this is because this planet is almost entirely made out of hydrogen and helium. Or are they something like this? Smaller in terms of size, larger than Earth in terms of mass, and um, very likely made out of water um, by a huge margin. So. Here we're talking about 25 to maybe 50% of mass being water. And in this case, the way that the scientists behind the study analyze this is by doing what's known as a Monte Carlo simulation, where literally 
thousands and thousands and possibly even millions of various simulations are created using the data that we have from Kepler and they created these randomly generated, procedurally generated planets with relatively similar mass and similar radius to what we've observed. And then they looked at what they were able to create and for the most part, pretty much most of these planets literally looked like this. They were all mostly water worlds. Very, very few of them were the hydrogen and helium worlds I showed you previously. So almost none of them looked like this. And this is very interesting because this suggests to us that a water world that you see right here is very likely the most common type of a planet out there, but not necessarily with liquid water on the surface. As a matter of fact, it's very likely that the vast majority of these planets are actually this type of a water world. They're ice worlds. They're worlds that are covered with ice on the surface, but inside of them there is a very, very, very large underground ocean. Kind of similar to what we have on objects like Europa right here, or Ganymede, or Enceladus, or Titan, or pretty much the vast majority of the moons of Jupiter and Saturn. In other words, these moons are very indicative of what we will find out there in the rest of the galaxy if we were to start exploring. We'll probably find these objects, but in much, much larger sizes. As a matter of fact, it's very likely that this right here is the face of a typical, very common exoplanet that seems to be present in pretty much almost every single star system out there, except for, unfortunately, Earth. Uh, so we do have these moons that are similar to what these planets will look like, but we don't actually have those mini Neptunes or uh, super Earths. As a matter of fact, it's a little bit ironic that the planet, the terrestrial planet, or the Earth-like planet with the most water in our own solar system is Earth, which only contains about 0.02% of water by mass. That is a very, very, very small amount. Mercury has almost none. Mars has very little as it's lost a lot of water over time. And Venus has probably the second largest amount, but all of it is underneath the crust. So in terms of water planets, we don't have any, we don't have any water worlds in our solar system except for the moons of giants like Saturn and Jupiter. But we obviously have a model of these planets and this is probably the best such model that we have, Titan. And so this is going to be my pitch to future astronomers, future explorers and future space conquerors. We have to go to Titan, we have to settle here because this right here is going to be a really good lesson for us on how to live and survive on those other very common planets out there in our galaxy that seem to be everywhere. This is a good example of what a water world might be like. Of course, maybe some of them are actually in the habitable zone of the star and might even have liquid water and then maybe even life for all we know, but the chance of this planet being in the habitable zone is relatively low compared to it being in the outskirts where it's much colder. So it's very likely that the vast majority of these so-called water worlds probably looks something like this. And so this object right here should really be the next destination for the human beings. I mean, Mars is cool and all, but this is way, way better. Anyway, on that note, that's all I wanted to mention in this video. Check out the paper I mentioned in the description below. Subscribe if you still haven't and share this video with someone who loves learning about space and sciences. I'll see you tomorrow. Come back tomorrow to learn something else. Space out. And as always, bye-bye.